Good evening, everyone. I am, in fact, Dwayne Johnson, and you are watching The Graham Norton Show. Tonight, I tell you, my sofa is hotter than a royal wedding invite. <gasps> Ooh, still waiting. Uh, no, there, ha <laughs> there has been a lot of speculation about who will be on the guest list, hasn't there? Now, unfortunately, it's private information, you know, so if only there was some way we could find that out. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is... Uh... <laughs> That's Facebook boss Mark Zuckerberg at this week's Senate hearing in America, looking into Facebook's misuse of private data. I'll tell you, that lady to his right in the green, she really seems to appreciate the senator's <laughs> forensic <laughs> grasp of new <laughs> issues. <laughs> Control all delete, is that it? <sighs> uh, fun fact, by the way, did you know Zuckerberg is currently worth $64 billion? I know. Well, minus the $2 he spent on that haircut. <laughs> Because, because uh, Mark's only five foot seven, uh, he sat on a booster seat during the questioning. I'm <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. feel a bit bad revealing that. Sorry, Mark, have I breached your privacy? <laughs> in the end, in the end, Zuckerberg did apologise for the misuse of people's data. Well, I say apologised. He sent the senators this. <laughs> now, back to the wedding. Harry and Meghan have decided not to have an official list of political leaders attending, which makes sense. Cos I tell you, if there's one thing Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn have in common, yeah, it's that they both know how to ruin a party. It's clever, that. Clever, isn't it? Clever. Hey, let's get some guests on! Later, we'll be joined by a true rock legend. Roger Daltrey will be here. He'll be chatting and singing a track from his new solo album. But first, he starred in The Office, Sherlock, The Hobbit, and the mega hit Black Panther. Now he brings us the truly terrifying ghost stories. Welcome back, Martin Freeman! <laughs> Mark as James Bond's Money Penny. Now she's back in action in the monster blockbuster Rampage. Oh, it's a pleasure to welcome Naomi Harris. Oh, waving from a distance. <laughs> Hello. Lovely to see you come in, come in, come in. And saving the world alongside Naomi, this man has gone from kicking ass in the wrestling ring to becoming the biggest action star on the planet. What more can I say? It's Dwayne The Rock Johnson! down the end that I was going to say move up, but the couch is sort of full. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> normally... You, this is as close as I get. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've kind of... Yeah, you have filled the couch. Um, now, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, I don't know. Dwayne Johnson, do you have your phone on you right now? Yes. Because you could be getting a call at any time. Absolutely. Any day now, any minute, uh, we're going to give birth to a baby girl and I cannot wait. Yeah, yeah, we. Yeah. We. <laughs> we. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We. We are giving birth. Yes. Are we? We are, yes. Yes. Uh, now, the uh, attractions we're having are. Uh, you're handling grown. it remarkably well. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> I think you know already that it's going to be a girl. Yes, we do. Okay. Yes, um, baby girl. And uh, you've chosen... I have three girls, by the way. I can't make boys. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try. I try. Yeah, keep trying. I guess. Yeah. Well, that's the fun part. I will continue <laughs> to try. <Yeah. laughs> Let's try for a boy. <laughs> and uh, you've chosen a name already? Uh, well, right now, the name is Tia. Oh, so it might change. Baby Tia. Tia is, like, the first choice. 
right? It's like it's like on the board is Tia, but you know we also are very uh, open to you know you never know when the baby's born. All of a sudden it's uh, you know Grandmetta. <laughs> no, I do. I mean Tia. It does scream for a second name. Like Dalma. No, like Maria. Maria. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, when you say to you, I just hear Maria. It's like, Maria. echo, quit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with the phone, though? Are you just going to disappear if you get a phone call? Or I'm gone. That would be yeah. so exciting. Really? Well, I go wheels that, would be, yeah, be so, that would be so yeah. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And the two of you would be so jealous. They'd be like, what excuse can we think of? Do you know I tell you? I'm, I'm expecting... Something very important as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, no, mate. FedEx. A FedEx delivery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get some shoes delivered. Oh, they're lovely. I, need, I, need I don't want to miss them. Yeah, I don't want to be out. <laughs> yeah. I have to go to the post office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, congratulations to Name as well, because since I last saw you, uh, your fantastic performance in Moonlight. <laughs> and, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But now, uh, Moonlight and the Oscars, it is now kind of stuff of legend. <laughs> yes. the, the, the end when they read out the wrong name. And we've talked about it on the show before. And Warren Beatty's been here. We asked him what was it done and everything. Um, but you were in the middle of it. So you did end up on stage. You did go up in the end. Eventually, when... yeah. Eventually. I mean, yeah, it took me a while because I was kind of glued to my seat in just shock. And then our producer dragged me on stage. So. But is it a nice way to win, to have disappointment first and then go, <laughs> oh no, yay! <laughs> It is in a way because there's never been a moment like that before or since at the Oscars. So I think it's kind of cool. And when everyone you're always on... remembers that moment. Everyone right? remembers well, that when moment. When you're on yeah. stage, you were looking out at the audience, and we've shown this picture before. It's a great picture. It's everyone like, like Matt Damon, <laughs> like a fly could find me. Michelle Williams looked shocked, but I don't think anyone is quite as concerned <laughs> as Dwayne <laughs> Johnson. <does. laughs> <laughs> <You, laughs> You seem really, really taken by. I really was. I and I remember. <laughs> yeah. like, like Meryl seems less bothered than you do. <laughs> Meryl is composed. I, I honestly thought I, I'm seconds away from running up on the stage and kicking somebody's ass because I thought <laughs> some, some bullshit was going down. So that's what I thought. You know, I thought like we were in the middle of like somebody trying to hijack something. Yeah, and not, and then I knew she had already said yes, by the way, to Rampage. So she was on stage. I was like, you don't mess with my girl. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess with my girl. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, talking of enormous achievements, uh, Black Panther. How nuts is that, Martin Freeman? Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> Uh, it's, it's a bigger than Titanic now. I don't, I'm not sure, but it's, um, it's done amazingly well and we're all very proud of it, yeah. I bet you are, yeah, yeah. because yeah, it, it's, 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 yeah. it's sort of taken on this extraordinary has, life beyond yeah, the movie. it's kind of gone, be, yeah, it feels like a moment, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's lovely to be part of that, yeah. Because I heard you talking about you went to the premieres and they were kind of unlike anything you'd ever experienced. They were, they were like football matches, yeah. They were, like, it was, they were properly vocal... Pretty much every fifth line was getting a big woofer. I mean, look, people were hungry for it, man. You know, people wanted it. Like, it was not just a... Yeah, it was, it was a bit more than a film. I mean, at the end, you know, I'm a big believer in it still has to be a good film, because if it's, if it's just an important thing, yeah, yeah. it's not a good film, then who cares? But it, ha it has to be a, a good film, and, and Ryan Coogler's a clever yeah. chap. So he... And when you look at the poster, uh, yourself and Andy Serkis do slightly stand out. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> apparently... <laughs> Apparently, the cast had a name for the two of you. Yeah, we were, we were not, because we had um, we performed in The Hobbit together before. Oh. Uh, so we were known as the Tolkien White Guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good joke. Which is a good, yeah, that's, that is a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, uh, Dwayne Johnson and Naomi Harris bring us the uh, monster movie Rampage. It's out now, and this is it's proper escapist, family-friendly fun. It's big critters, you guys, gigantic monsters. <laughs> yes, yeah, us yeah. trying to save the world and trying exactly. not to get eaten. Yeah. So, so tell us who, who you play. I play a geneticist called Kate Caldwell, and she's responsible for creating the virus that infects the. Um, 
Dwayne's character's best friend, who's a silverback gorilla. And I feel really guilty about it, so I want to go on the journey with him Obviously. to come up with the cure. Yes, basically. that. Yeah. And uh, you play, is it, are they, is it a primatologist? Is that what you call a prim yep. primatologist? Yep, I play a primatologist, and I used to head up a uh, anti poaching unit in Rwanda, play a primatologist, and my best friend, of course, as Naomi said, is a is a gigantic albino gorilla. His name is George. Yeah, yeah there he is. <laughs> no, he gets a lot bigger than that. Well, you know, as a matter of fact, he was actually inspired by a real gorilla, the only albino gorilla ever found, and who passed away in 2002, uh, was Snowflake. And a uh, beautiful gorilla. Is he the one in Barcelona? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I went to see him. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Isn't yeah. that cool? Yeah. Well, so, what yeah. a life I've led, I... Uh... <laughs> yes, yeah. Let me go on, I... <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway. But, yes, inspired. So, George oh, really? was inspired by Snowflake, oh, wow. who you met. But yeah. you did name it. You thought you'd be working with sort of, you know, cardboard cutouts and things. But... Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, but instead I got tennis balls. <laughs> numbered, like, one to seven. And then our director, mm. Brad, would call off on the sidelines. Look at number two, the building's falling down. Mm. Look at number three, the alligator's coming towards you. And that was it. That's all we had to work off. But then, but there was somebody, like a man was George. Yes, yes. We had an actor um, called Jason Lyles, and he played the gorilla, and he was fantastic. But how did that work? Because George is enormous. Mm. Well, he, was, at first, uh, in the movie Rampage, George is a normal-sized gorilla, and all the animals are normal-sized until they become in effect, infected with the pathogen mm -hmm. that she created. Um, and Jason Lyles uh, it was a motion capture actor, much like Andy Serkis, uh, you're right, in Planet of the Apes, and it was an amazing process. And then as the gorilla grew in the movie, we would continue to put Jason on stands where he got higher and higher and higher. So every moment in the movie, we were always acting opposite a human being. So you could always look him in the eye? Always look him in the yeah. eye, yes, compared to Terry. By the end, he was on, like, a crane, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't actually see his eyes? <laughs> yeah, I, could, I, I can make out his eyes. <laughs> uh, we've got a clip, we've got a clip. This is exciting. This is you, the two of you uh, trying to escape what is essentially a very large dog. <laughs> How the hell did we get out this roof? Maybe we don't have to get off the roof at all. What? We definitely do. Oh, come on. David, there's no tail on this helicopter. That's right. We don't need one. Well, you do if you want to fly. We're not going to fly. We're going to crash. What? Okay, we just need to get enough lift to stay on top of the building as it falls. You know, just like riding an avalanche. No, I don't know. <laughs> Very good. And the life of an actor, David Harris. I love this. You've worked with tough guy James Bond, yes. but you've also worked with The Rock. Yes. Uh, in terms of toughness, <laughs> uh, who's tougher? Oh, my God. <laughs> You finished one film and you're yeah. hoping to do the next. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then I'm going to go with Bond. No. He's tougher. He wrestles with crocodiles for goodness sake in his spare time. Uh, do you really? Yes. That's a hobby. Well, no, I, it's an alligator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were. I live down in Florida. I live on the Everglades and was able to go down and there's a uh, there's an alligator uh, sanctuary. And we it, there's about six to eight of us that was able to pull one out of the water. Mm. And I was able to get on it and mm -hmm. hold its jaw together and pull it back and... When you say it. sanctuary... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Torture chamber. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so I feel so safe chain. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alligator, alligator farm. I should have said farm. It's alligator farm. Not a sanctuary, yes. <laughs> uh, and, and, and very quickly, there is... A, but I don't know if you guys have talked about this, but you have a connection to James Bond. Uh... Yes, I don't think she knows this. Oh, okay. Yes, so this is the very first time. Yes, yeah. so in um, uh, You Only Live Twice, Yeah. Uh, my grandfather was a baddie. Oh, wow. And uh, they had this awesome yeah. fight scene. Yeah. yeah now, this, is, now, honestly, when yeah, you see his face, cool. when you see his face, uh, he looks like you. Uh, I mean, he does look like you. Wow. You can see him there. Can we see uh, the clip? We can see, but this is, this is him doing some proper... Because he was a proper wrestler, wasn't he? He was, yes. yes. So you can see him doing proper wrestling moves. Uh, yes. Wee! Now, this next bit, I feel, it's... I think it's pretty clear that, that wall is made of paper. <laughs> <laughs> but then... But then Sean... Con look at the, Sean Connery does an extraordinary thing. Like, that... Like, that's... <laughs> 
that's a very light sofa. I, I think so, yes. <laughs> you have to pay good money for that sofa. <laughs> <laughs> but now, what was, uh, what was his best thing in? He was high chief. Thank you. It's so cool. Yeah. He yeah. was high chief. He was, so that's his wrestling name, his real name was uh, High Chief Peter Maivia, and he was a High Chief of Samoa, and he actually started his career here uh, in, uh, in England. Oh. And, that, and he was trained uh, English style, and at that time in the 60s, I believe, English style wrestling was, um, there was a lot of, of what's called shoot wrestling, like derived from shoot fight, which eventually became MMA, mm -hmm. so it was a very tough style of wrestling here mm -hmm. in England, and, uh, and yeah, so that's how he was trained. And we've got that picture of him, now, is this him as a wrestler, is that his kind of like his stage that's, gear, or is that him in Samoa? That's him as a pro wrestler, but wearing his high chief um, gear. And is it true that in Moana, that your character was based on him. Sure, correct. So a lot of uh, the uh, the details of that character, uh, Maui, was based off of my grandfather with the long hair and very big build and tattoos. Mm -hmm. um, and in Polynesian culture and Samoan culture, um, you to become a high chief, you have tattoos um, 360 degrees from your knees mm -hmm. uh, all the way up to the bottom of your chest. Mm -hmm. Everything. Wow. And, and it's hardcore, and they I do it with a, with a tap. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, everything, everything. Nah, not everything. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. I heard everything. Yes. Working around. Well, the cash and prizes is, is yes. lifted. Yes. And then you. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but because you've been in that film now, do you get sort of children wanting you to kind of delight them as, as Maui? All the time. <laughs> All the time, like it, it's constant. It's always constant. Mm. Oh, you sing the song, sing your song, sing your song, and I do it, and then and then they cheer, and then I go say, hey, okay, we'll have a good day, and then ah, sing again. <laughs> 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 constant, constant. Yes. He has a great voice, though. Oh, thank you. Oh, you should sing kind. to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last day. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I don't know if I... I don't I, oh, I don't. That looked like a man who wants to. I, do, I don't know. All right, let's see. Uh... <laughs> what, what's the music? What's the music? A little just go right into the rap part. And this is what the kids love. So it's all right. Listen, kid, honestly, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was Maui just messing around. I killed a kneel and I buried its guts. Sprouted a tree, now you got coconuts. What's the lesson? What does it take away? Don't mess with Maui when he's on a breakaway. And the tapestry here on my skin is a map of the victories I win. Look where I've been. I make everything happen. Look at that me, mini Maui just tick it tapping. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. That's so impressive. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, Martin Freeman, you bring us such a scary film. Uh, <laughs> Ghost Stories. It's out now. Some of you may have already seen it. And it, it is what it says. It's a collection of ghost stories yes. with a sort of framing device. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it, I, I suppose it sort of borrows from that kind of British horror film, I guess from the 50s to the 70s, those sort of portmanteau films where there'd be three or four stories in one film somehow kind of linked. Those at Hammer and Amicus old British films that I grew up watching on the telly, I guess. You know, they, that was one of my first connections with horror. I'd watch Match of the Day on a Saturday night and then a double bill of, you know, some old horror films. It was fantastic. Um, and I guess it borrows a little bit tonally from those, but all, all new original stories based on the play by the same... Directors and writers Andy Nyman and Jeremy Dyson. We'll talk about it in a minute, but first, uh, here's a taste mm. of what to expect. Mm. You're telling me you actually saw that happen? It's my understanding that uh, Poltergeist is an evil spirit or an angry spirit, is that true? No. <laughs> There's absolutely no evidence to support that. The guys at the hospital took Maria in for a scan, but they didn't want to show us. Said there were distortions on the screen or something. No. Sorry. Right in the middle of this Chinese thing. Yeah, so the scan. <laughs> it's a bit, uh, bit chilly, Prof. Sorry, I am. Uh... <laughs> Have you ever killed anything, Mr. Goodman? 
Certainly not. Nothing you'll admit to, eh? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. So good. Yeah. So straight. Yeah. 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 Cool. I love those fights. They're great. Yes. Yeah, they're clever. They're clever chaps. Yeah. Andy and Jeremy. And really, Andy's really brilliant in the film as well. And, um, yeah, I, I really like it. I really like it. It's, no, it's, it's, it's enjoyably scary. Yeah, it's kind of proper horror film. It's not like a saw or a No, it's yet. not three hours of someone getting a drill bored into their skull. <laughs> or something. No, it's not that sort of horror film. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not that. Yeah. It's, um... Yeah, it's a, a, it's quite a smart film, I think. Yeah. But what's weird is because as a film, you mm. you kind of like I say, this is a genre we recognise, we, yeah. we understand this genre. But uh, but I didn't see it in the theatre. Did you see it in the theatre? Because people no, it, I didn't. But I, apparently, I, I, people were really <laughs> freaked out by it. I think they were. I know a few people who were scared witless by the play. And I've I, I've done a product, you know, the the play, The Woman in Black. Oh yeah, I did that years ago, and. Getting a live reaction, you know, a live terrified reaction from an audience is... It's amazing, because you're so used to sort of having it on the TV or maybe at a film, but when you can occasionally elicit that reaction from a lot of people in an auditorium, like a live theatre, yeah. you know, it's so enjoyable, because people are just terrified. But, you know, that, that communal <laughs> thing of wanting to go somewhere in a room, in the dark, and wanting to be terrified is... It's important, I think, because yeah. it's it's enjoyable, you know. Mm. Yeah, and I, it's weird because I don't know where the pleasure is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like you leave out. I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm good. Well, I know some people. Yeah, I know some people who who can't. You know, I have friends of mine who've come to see it who, who can, just can barely bear to watch it. Really, they or they just look. They just look at the floor when they know there's scary bits. And weirdly, unusually, let me say, uh, your your character isn't very likable. Like, you're normally quite a nice guy in things. Yeah, yeah, I have played some nice guys, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I, I, play, I suppose I play people with empathy, I, I suppose, a lot yeah, of the Yeah, this guy, not that. Not really, no, he's, a, he's a quite an obnoxious... <laughs> yeah, are you a bad guy in it? Look. He's not... A, yeah, he's not a nice man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he... Because uh, there, you... there are three kind of ghost stories, and the, the other... Andy Nyman, who I'm in the scene with there, he plays somebody whose life's work it is to debunk the belief in the supernatural. He, he wants people not to believe in anything supernatural. Your character. No, the, the oh, other OK, guy. yeah. And but so, you believe. So, yeah, so, so yeah. I'm one of those people who... He, I've got a case here. OK, well, if you don't believe in the supernatural, what the hell happened to me then? So I'm one of those cases, like, well, I can't explain this any other way than a, a belief in the supernatural. Because right. something terrible has happened to Do me. Do you hunt them now? No. Oh, got Sorry. It. You're not seeing it now, are you? <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got to remake it. Yeah. He's got to remake it where <laughs> he hunts down ghosts you hunt them, and right? kills yeah. them properly. This film is not for you. No, absolutely. I don't watch any horror movies what? ever. No, no, I don't. The last one I ever watched was Jaws, and that was enough for me. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Was that a similar thing? Did you watch it too young? Uh, no, I was old. <laughs> and I was still scared. <laughs> I just can't do horror movies. <laughs> right. I have too much of an imagination. Poltergeist. Haven't seen Edmondville it. Edmondville Horror. Have not seen it. Conjuring. No. Have not seen it. Oh, wow. no. None of them. I, I refuse. Because I knew the scare that was coming in that, so I was kind of, out of the corner of my eye, I was watching you to see if Dwayne would kind of play nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting like... for the hunting suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That monster's so close to him, why doesn't he yeah. shoot it? <laughs> <laughs> it's right in his face now. Oh, oh he's missed an opportunity uh... there. <laughs> <laughs> but some things do frighten you, or, do, or you don't like. Roller coasters? You, you don't like roller coasters? Well, it's not that I do... Well, yeah, I just... I have a, um, a, a thing getting strapped in. And you know with roller coasters sometimes, mm. they have the bars that come down... Oh, yes. ...locks mm. and things like that, and it just... I feel... If I feel compression on my chest mm -hmm. or my shoulders, mm -hmm. it just starts to... Yeah, forget I'm not being weird. Would you even fit in one of them? I mean, how... <laughs> that... Well, maybe that was the problem. I think it I just think. comes out of here. I, that's probably the problem that happened, <laughs> yes. And I didn't... It developed... I guess it developed probably when in my mid-20s when mm. we were down at Universal uh, in Florida and it came down on me and I mm -hmm. felt it. Maybe I was a little too big, but it, I felt it press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it just... It, Coloured me, and that was it. But in your previous life, you had things pressing on your chest, all like you had people pressing it, like you. So you. Were... But no, <laughs> no, 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 no,
Well, isn't it? I mean, may, maybe not. Well, are you scared of joking all the time? Not all the time. <laughs> Do you know something? I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up to you because this is a bit like therapy, and oh, I yeah. had two gin and tonics. <laughs> every, time, every time I have an avocado, every time I cut through an avocado, and I see the stone, I, I envisage that stone <laughs> being lodged in my windpipe. And I, and every time, I think I physically go. Mm. <laughs> I That's, can't stand it. Is that quite debilitating? No, I just don't have that much avocado. <laughs> <laughs> I just do it all the time. No, I've got a real thing, though. I've got a real thing about choking. I mean, if you're on your own, if you're in a hotel, you know, if you're just... It could take days to find you. <laughs> what if you has, choked to death? Well, I guess what, has it happened to you? Yes, I've choked to death many times. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? No wonder you're scared of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it has. It has happened to me. Oh, you have choked? On oh, food? It ha yeah, and it's scary. It's a horrible... Did somebody, did somebody dislodge it? One time they did, actually. It was, I, I did that show, Never Mind the Buzzcocks, and oh, one yeah. time I'd had too many of his crisps. Because <laughs> I'm a pig, and I like eating crisps as quickly as possible, so I hoovered these crisps down, and they weren't ready to go down, <laughs> and they got lodged. And so I had a beer in my hand, and I was, like, doing that, and people going... <laughs> And um, so I had this beer, it sort of all came out. And for, thank God, someone, a, a, an actor called Andy Smart, who I'd known for years, got behind me and did the Heimlich manoeuvre, and I was very, very grateful. Because, as I understand it, if you can still breathe or mm -hmm. talk, then it's, it's, in the, it's in the safe pipe. Or cough, or... Yes, yes, yeah, then you're not going to die. But it, it feels very scary when you've got something lodged in your throat. That's happened to me a few times. Last time it happened to me was at Andy Serkis's house. Wait a minute, that's happened to you a few times? Yeah! Because well, I still haven't stop learned. Stop wolfing <laughs> food down! But Graham, it's fucking crisps. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I'm not going to chew that shit. <laughs> I'll just devour crisps. What, what's, a, what's a crisp? Is it like a, a donut? Chip, potato chips. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Potato, potato chips. chips, yeah. They're nice, right? Well, it seems unlikely, doesn't it? Yeah. But also, yeah. they're a bit jagged. They're a bit jagged. Ow. Ooh. Do, do, do you swallow them whole or do you no. chew them? <laughs> <laughs> you, chew them. Uh, you would think not. Yeah, yeah. You would think not. Uh, but no, I do definitely chew, but. Um, you just ate too much. Not enough. Yeah, because yeah, I'm enough. in such a hurry to get that crispy flavour. <laughs> 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 to get that sort of hit of cholesterol. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait for your obituary. <laughs> <laughs> He'd been warned many times. <laughs> Uh, now, we, we were, I think you, you were asked on the way if you had any kind of uh, irrational fears or phobias. So, uh, to put up your hands, if you've got uh, uh, fears and phobias. Fears and phobias. Okay, I'm, I'm going into the audience. Here we go. Uh, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Uh, I'll start up here. Da, da, da. Oh, there's a lady up here. Hello. Uh, stand up, do. Uh, what's Hi. your name? Karis. Karis. And what are you, what are you scared of? Um, Chris. No! <laughs> no! Are you just saying that? No, are you seriously scared of crisps? Why are you scared of crisps? Um, I did this course when I was 10 or something, and these girls had one of those, you know, the big, like, multi-packs? Oh, yes, I do. And they spilt them all over the floor, yeah. and there were all those sort of crisp dust everywhere. I feel weird <laughs> and... Yeah, maybe never do again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, so it was just the dust, the crisp dust frightened you? Dust, and now the smell, okay. everything. But you've never choked on a crisp? No. No. I she wouldn't have the chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Who, you were, you were, your hand up? Oh, both hands up. Stand up, too. What's your name? Uh, Ahmed. Hi. Ahmed, and what's your, what's your fear? The, the, it's very serious. Um, I have a physical fear of kids wearing suits. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Wow. That's, That's good. good. Okay, yeah. That's all right now. Yeah. I know. Like, first confirmations, they're not for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it must be difficult at weddings. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, actually my sister is getting married in July, but she, she told me it should be okay. She, uh, she made sure that the children are just in jumpers and jeans. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I, so my, my question is if you see a kid with a suit on, what happens? Like, what do you feel? Well, it happened to me last weekend, so my kids know about my condition, so I was. <laughs> 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 I was walking in the street with my kids, and then my daughter was like, oh, daddy, daddy, look, and there was a group of people, and they were actually stepping out of a wedding, and she said, oh, look, look, and there was a, a child with a, with a suit, a bow tie, actually. Oh, not a bow tie. <laughs> I, was, uh, I, I was in the middle of the road, I almost, you know, like... Uh, really? That... And my daughter was laughing at me, of <laughs> And do you know where this comes from? Actually, I think it might be a trauma from a movie where there was a killer dwarf. Oh, yes. <laughs> but, 
And I'm children not... are getting the blame. <laughs> but I'm not sure. I mean, yes. Uh... And now you were, the, you were. Is yours food based or not food based? No, no, oh, no. not food based. Oh, do no. stand up too. Uh, what's yours now? Sheep and goats. <laughs> sheep and goats. Yeah, yeah. Now that must mostly be... sheep. Mostly sheep. Mostly sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I can't deal with the eyes. What happens to sheep's eyes? Have you seen the eyes of a sheep? Just the pupils. It's just weird. I can't deal with it. Does anyone know what he's talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Look it up on Google. Look it up. Look Look it up. It. So sheep's eyes? Yeah, yeah, the pupils. I can't... They so are the eyes of a serial killer. Really? <laughs> so a sheep in sunglasses? Fine. I'm fine with that. I'm fine. <laughs> And, it. and when did you discover you were afraid of uh, sheep and goats? I, sheep and goats. I went to Wales. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that will do it. And well done, all the bogus people. Very good. <laughs> Children in suits is my favourite. Wow. Children in suits makes sense. It does. And it's time to meet our final guest. He is the iconic frontman of one of our greatest rock bands, The Who. They've sold over a hundred million albums, broken records worldwide. Please welcome for the first time the great Roger Daltrey. <laughs> Hiya. There is <laughs> Martin. 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 Have a seat, too. Have a seat, yeah. too, sir. There you go. Oh, uh, welcome to the show, sir. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good, good, yeah. good. And uh, welcome back to the world of music, to uh, A new album, As Long As I Have You, uh, and that is out on the 1st of June. Yeah. And I suppose it's not quite what people would expect from Roger Daltrey's solo <coughs> album. Uh, no, well, my, my solo albums were always a hobby. Um, but I've taken this one seriously. <laughs> uh, uh, and I've gone back to doing the kind of music that Who used to do before Pete Townsend started writing the songs. Um, and I used to be a soul singer. But, of course, at, at sort of 17, 18, 19 years old, you can sing the words and the, and, and the, and the notes, but there's, there's not much soul in there because you haven't lived the life yet. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's been great to revisit them and... You know, with the years I've got underneath my belt now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you've... Uh, have you finished your memoir? Have you done... Have you finished I've it? I've finished it, yeah, yeah. And when is that... Went that out later in the year, October? It's out in October, yeah. Uh, it's called uh, Thanks A Lot, Mr Kibblewhite. <laughs> and the publishers know that's what it's called? Oh, they, yes. <laughs> well, they do now. <laughs> uh, who was Mr Kibblewhite? He was my headmaster. Oh, OK. Yeah. But, I mean, I looked at all the, the other rock biographies and I... I didn't do a publishing deal then write a book. I just wrote a book and then went and gave it to publishers. And they liked it and I was shocked. Because I didn't want to be under the cosh of, of them, you, know, you we want more of that, we want more of that, we want more of that. I wanted to write a book about what it felt like to be in the middle of that whirlwind of being in what became the biggest band in the world in the early 70s, mid 70s, the Who were massive, yeah. massive. Uh, and, of course, we were street kids from Shepherd's Bush from around here. Yeah. Uh, so to deal with what was loaded on us at sort of 25 years old was so difficult because it was an industry that we were making up as we went along. <laughs> and not to judge the other members of The Who, but are you the only one who remembers any of it? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, Pete, Pete remembers a lot of it. Uh, <laughs> I, there's big gaps that I don't remember, I must say. I've had five... Con quite bad concussions in my life and there's such a big gap so I don't remember. But I was the only straight one with three addicts. You know, Pete was an alcoholic, later a drug addict. John was an alcoholic, a uh, cocaine addict. Moon was an anything addict. <laughs> you know, even, even, <laughs> even <laughs> Vim. <laughs> <laughs> but that must have been so hard being that guy. Well, someone had to be straight and someone had yeah. to be tough and uh, it fell on me. Because, Mark, uh, you're a huge Who fan, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I love the Who, yeah, yeah of course yeah, yeah. I do, yeah. But yeah. you like the whole thing. It's not just the music. You like the whole look, everything about them. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, since I was a kid, the, the mod thing was a, always a massive, massive thing for me, and it influenced my entire life, really, yeah. It did. Would you, do, are you sorry you didn't end up in music? Because I hear you talking about music, and it seems mm. like you like it more. <laughs> well, I do. I like it more than anything, yeah. yeah. It's definitely my favourite art form. I, I can literally sing, but, I mean, you wouldn't want to hear my album. <laughs> <laughs> 
try and make you one. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Do that, do that. And when it comes to, you know, lots of people love The Who, but when it comes to all those uh, stereotypical archetypal kind of rock band things, you know, smashing guitars, wrecking hotel rooms, throwing TVs out of hotel rooms, that's all you. I mean, that's all... That wasn't me. No. <laughs> but, it was the, but it was The Who. That it was The Who was started most, all that. Yeah, it was mostly Keith Moon and Pete Townsend. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Moon did most of the damage, but uh, Pete Townsend was quite an instigator of quite a lot of it. <laughs> um, and it was all done in great jest at the time, but when, now I think back on it, a lot of it wasn't really very funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, there's one thing we can talk about, because we've got a, we've got a, a clip. This is a, a moment of madness. Was it your live kind of prime time uh, debut uh, on you American TV? Uh, uh, you're talking about Smothers Brothers? The Smothers Brothers. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Uh, the Smothers Brothers was the biggest show in America in its day. This was 1967. And they invited us on, and it was... And, of course, we, we were kind of famous at that time for breaking up our instruments with my generation. And we did the rehearsal. And, by the way, on the, on the same show were two of the biggest stars of their time in the whole of the film industry. There was Betty Davis and Mickey Rooney. Wow. Anyway... Unbeknownst to us, we used to have this kind of thing where the drums kind of just went poof and smoke came out and just a relatively tame little thing, you know, yeah. where Pete broke his guitars. And it was theatrics to yeah. go with the noise that the guitar made while it was being broken, which was like an animal being slaughtered. <laughs> anyway, when it came to the take, Moon had got the pyrotechnic technician drunk <laughs> <laughs> and bunged him a couple of dollars and, and he, he overcharged the cannon that was behind the bump face drum <laughs> and it went off like a hand grenade. I mean, it really... It was, but like, people got hurt, didn't they? It, well, Moon had a bit of shrapnel. It, he had a bit of... <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he comes out and he's got... If he's holding his arm, if you watch it carefully, he's holding his arm, he's got a piece of drum in his arm. <laughs> Pete's hair caught light, and if you see Pete, he's immediately like this. <laughs> 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 Brett Davis immediately passes out at the side of the set, <laughs> and, and Mickey Rooney catches her and then lays her on the floor and goes, Ray! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've got the clip. So this, so this is, so this is, as described, this is uh, some people finishing a song, <laughs> expecting an explosion, but it's a lot bigger. <laughs> and you can see, like, the camera work. <laughs> anyway, what... So this I get blown out of shot, by the way. <laughs> I was flat on my face on the floor. <laughs> Here we go. This is Mother Brothers. Let's hope that doesn't happen tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roger, would you like to go over and join your band? Yeah, We're about yeah, to hear yeah, from yeah, you. Yeah. OK, they're ready for you over there. <laughs> and... OK, performing as long as I have you, it is Mr Roger Daltrey! <laughs> Good morning, darkness. But up on my way up to the sun
Terrific. Really, really great. Woo! Tell you, we're all energized now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, before we go tonight, we do have time for a quick visit to the big red chair. Uh, who's there? Hello. Hiya. Uh, what's your name? Uh, my name's Phil and I'm from Surrey. Phil's from Surrey. Mm. That was good. That was very good. I'm from mm. Phil and I'm from Surrey. And uh, what do you do, <laughs> Phil? Uh, I work in the public service. In the public service? Does that mean tax? No, it means police. <laughs> oh, police. Oh, are you plain clothes? Is that... Uh... Oh, I'm yeah. oh, Study that face, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, off you go with the story, Phil. OK, so my mum bought herself one of these circulation boosting machines that passes electricity through your feet just to boost your blood circulation. She's 80. Um, I went round to her house one evening cos she was having trouble setting it up. she just got out of the shower, she had her dressing gown on, she was on the sofa. Uh, being a typical bloke, I thought, I'm going to notch this up to 90% just to make it work properly. Um, <laughs> my poor mum's 80 year old, she put her feet on the machine, I, I turned it on, I got a shriek from her. She fell back onto the sofa. Unfortunately, legs went ten to two. She kicked me in the oh, jaw. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, think I think I've spared us all a visual. <laughs> have I? I hope I have. <laughs> uh, 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 should we go, uh, one more? Should we have one more? Okay, one more. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Oh, the glamour. Hello. Uh, what's your name? My name is Sikana. Sikana. Ooh, yes. dress up Friday. <laughs> and uh, uh, what do you do, Sikana? I am a patient advocate for mental health. Wow. And uh, where are you from? I'm half American, half Iraqi. OK. OK. Yes. Off you go with your story. So, um, I actually grew up in New Zealand, um, and um, I used to work at a major art gallery there, and I'm guessing this is the time where The Hobbit was being filmed. Because one day Sir Ian McKellen walked in. I was very excited. I went up to him, said hi, shook his hand. He was a lovely, lovely guy. But then he started going to part of the gallery where you need a ticket to get into the exhibition. So I asked him, I said, oh, do you have a ticket for the show? And he said, no, no, I don't. And I said, I'm sorry, you shall not pass. <laughs> 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 it's like my I, I should have made a walk. I should have made a walk. Uh, well done, everyone. If you to join us on the show and have a go in that red chair, you can just visit us at our website, this very address. And uh, that is it for tonight. Please say a huge thank you to my guest, Roger Daltrey, everybody. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson! Yeah. Do I 
Join me next week with musical guests Calvin Harris and Dua Lipa, uh, Hot from the Kitchen, Mary Berry and Claudia Winkleman, actor Maxine Peake, uh, episode star Matt LeBlanc, and Doctor Strange himself, Benedict Cumberbatch. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye! <laughs>